even today, some people say that sports is a man's world. But these athletes proved it could be a woman's world too. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today I'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 first for women in sports. A woman can't be in the locker room. By definition, that sport was turning her into a second-class citizen. Number 10. First woman to swim the English Channel, Gertrude Ederly. When you ever hear of a woman named Gertrude Ederly? No. No, I can't say that I have, Ken. First woman to swim the English Channel. Ederly was born in New York in 1905, and she learned to swim as a child at her family's cottage in New Jersey. When she was 12, she joined the New York Women's Swimming Association, and within months she had set the world record in the 880-yard freestyle swim, the first of nine world records. In 1924, Ederly and her relay team took home a gold medal in the Summer Olympics, and just two years later she became the first woman to swim the freezing, turbulent 21 miles from Cap Grinet to Kingsdown, Kent, a swim that took over 14 hours. She certainly earned her nickname Queen of the Waves. She had conquered the English Channel. Only five men had ever done it before, but Trudy's time was two hours faster, and she was a woman. Number 9. First female sports reporter in a locker room, Robin Herman. From the late 70s when women were first admitted into the locker room to the mid-90s when I retired, I could see a change. It was palpable. Robin Herman was in the first class of women allowed to attend Princeton University, she was the New York Times' first female sports reporter, and she was the first female reporter in a male locker room. Scandalous. I turned and walked over to the sports editor. I said to him, why didn't you give me a sports assignment? And he was surprised and he said, well, we didn't think you'd want to cover one. And I said to him, why should I do half the work of everybody else? This shocking event took place in Montreal, after the National Hockey League's All-Star Game. After arguing for a year, Herman was finally allowed to interview the hockey teams immediately after the game, accompanied by radio reporter Marcel Saint-Cyr. By breaking the locker room barrier, Herman challenged the practices that put female reporters at a disadvantage. But to this day, it's still a controversial topic. The hockey game ended at 10.40, and then I would literally run down to the locker room and try to get a quote from the coach, a quote from some of the players, and then run back up to the press room and type my story on typewriter. Number eight, first woman to reach the summit of Mount Everest, Junko Tabe. Nang Mount Everest, nang unang babay mountaineer this day in 1975. Nagustuhan ng Japanese mountaineer na si Junko Tabe. There's no mountain too high for Junko Tabe. She began the Everest climb in early 1975, with a group of other women from her ladies climbing club Japan, which she formed. It was a long and perilous journey, an avalanche destroyed their camp in May, and Tabe was buried unconscious under the snow. She didn't let that stop her though, and just 12 days later she became the first woman to reach the summit. Tabe followed in the footsteps of many other adventurous female mountaineers, including Barbara Washburn, who became the first woman to climb Denali in 1947, and Lucy Walker, who climbed the Matterhorn way back in 1871. Number 7. First woman to coach a men's pro basketball team, Nancy Lieberman. Former broadcaster and current NBA head coach, NBA D-League head coach, Nancy Lieberman with the Texas Legends, and I gotta throw in, you're a Hall of Famer as well. Coaching women in pro sports has to be one of the hardest fields for women to break into. Because I understand the significance of the hire, the history, and what we're doing together. I mean, that's what, you know, David Stern and Dan Reed and Chris Alperts were all doing this together. Nancy Lieberman started off playing basketball, and she played for the USA Women's Pan American team and in the first Women's Olympic basketball competition Competition, all while she was still a teenager. It's not surprising that she continued to play in college and even after she graduated. She started coaching in 1998, when she became the general manager and head coach of WNBA's Detroit Shock. A decade later, she shattered the social hierarchy that prevented women from instructing men when she was hired to coach the Texas Legends, a men's professional basketball team. Because it's perceived to be different. I knew it was going to be normal. You guys didn't know it was going to be normal, but it's, it's never been anything other than what it should be. Me preparing to coach young men to be better. Number six, first woman to found an MLB team, Joan Whitney Payson. Joan Whitney Payson was a huge sports fan who held shares in the New York Giants Major League Baseball Club back before the team became the San Francisco Giants. After the team moved to San Francisco, which she strongly disagreed with, she promptly sold her stock and set about forming a new team for New York. Payson and M. Donald Grant founded the team together, and Payson was the majority shareholder and owner. 
It goes without saying that her team, the New York Mets, went on to become one of the most popular Major League Baseball teams. I feel like standing along with everyone. What a great year to be a Mets fan, really. I mean, who the hell expected this to happen? Number five. First woman to race the Daytona 500 and the Indianapolis 500, Janet Guthrie. Guthrie set out to make history in 1977. She hoped to become the first woman to qualify for the Daytona 500. Could it be done? Janet Guthrie raced into women's history in the 1970s. Though she had a degree in physics and started out as an aerospace engineer, she decided to become a race car driver. At the time of my first real speed event, the Ellenville Hill Climb, and um, would have been 1961, I guess, um, I thought, I've never read about anything like this. Soon she was racing professionally, driving a Jaguar XK140. She broke a lot of barriers, being the first woman to compete in a NASCAR Winston Cup Super Speedway race, and going on to race the Indy 500 and Daytona 500. When I made that qualifying run, I honest to God didn't know whether I was going to end up inside the racetrack or over the wall and 30 feet outside. She faced a lot of discrimination and discouragement because car racing was thought to be something that only men could do, and more importantly, only men should do. Some drivers will say that a woman doesn't belong in a Grand National race car. But this woman, Janet Guthrie, just doesn't agree. But she persevered and paved the way for other female racers to come. You know, I've heard stories about a, a little a kid, whether boy or girl, saying, but mommy, daddy, that's a, that's a girl that's out there racing. And then they can have that conversation to say, you can do anything you want to do. And gender doesn't matter. Your passion is what matters. Number four, first woman to win the WWF Intercontinental Championship, China. Through the time starting out with these men and being on the road with them and being accepted from them basically hating me and trying to like, you know, hurt me. Joni Marie Lauer, otherwise known as China, was a bodybuilder and a professional wrestler, rising through the World Wrestling Federation until she was called the ninth wonder of the world. The ninth wonder of the world, making WWF history, the first woman ever to enter the Royal Rumble match. Besides being the first woman to compete in both the Royal Rumble and the King of the Ring tournament, China fought Jeff Jarrett for the title of WWF now known as WWE, Intercontinental Champion. China has made history! China, the first woman to become the Intercontinental Champion! In what was called a good housekeeping match, there were household items lying outside of the ring, and the contestants were allowed to use them as weapons against each other. It is not a household item, therefore, this match must continue! China won the championship by smashing a guitar over Jarrett's head. China's got the guitar! Number three, first woman to play in the NHL, Manon Réon. Going to Tampa and being like the only girls there and being a rookie and being French, I had like everything against me to start with. On the ice, Manon Réon's job was to defend the net, but she still spent her hockey career breaking through barriers. Also, the guys, they don't want a girl stopping them, so they shoot even harder on me. She spent years playing in the minor leagues, and then in a moment that made history, she was signed to the Trois-Rivières Draveurs, which made her the first woman in a men's Junior A hockey game. So I played Junior A that year, and from there, um, I got invited to the Tampa Bay Lightning training camp. A year later, she was the first woman to try out for an NHL team, and she was quickly signed as a free agent. She goaltended for the Tampa Bay Lightning against the St. Louis Blues, meaning that she not only played, but led the team onto the ice. The walk between my locker room to the ice, uh, my heart never beat as fast and as hard as that moment. And it was amazing, the feeling as soon as I stepped on the ice, it went away. Number two, first woman in minor league baseball, Lizzie Arlington. In the late 1800s, a lot of female baseball clubs and teams were formed and then quickly dissolved because women were supposed to be spectators, not players. There's no crying in baseball! Why don't you leave her alone, Jimmy? Oh, you zip it, Doris! But that wasn't going to stop Elizabeth Stroud, more commonly known as Lizzie Arlington. She grew up playing baseball with her father and brothers and continued to play as a young woman. When she was 22, she was the first woman to sign a professional baseball contract and in 1898 pitched in a game with the Reading Coal Heavers of the Atlantic League. And even the skeptical, sexist reporters of the time had to admit that she was a success. Since then, many more women have played professional baseball, including Jackie Mitchell, who struck out Babe Ruth himself in 1931. 
Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. People are capable of a lot by the attention that they give to you know, what they're trying to accomplish. And I think that had a lot to do with what I was doing. I gave it so much attention in, in my whole life. Your position helps people see the kind of leader and person you are. And if I had thought of myself as a woman first, then that would be all the men would see. I am a football administrator first, then the rest follows. When I sought the job, you know, I was obviously aware that being a woman was of some significance, but it did not occur to me that getting the job was going to be received the way it has been received. Number one, first individual woman to win an Olympic gold medal, Charlotte Cooper. As a woman in Victorian England, tennis player Charlotte Cooper was obliged to play wearing a floor-length skirt. But that didn't stop her from winning five Wimbledon singles titles, among many others. Then in the 1900 Summer Olympics in Paris, women were allowed to compete for the first time. Cooper played in the tennis singles event and took home the gold medal, making her the first woman to win a gold medal as an individual rather than part of a team. She set the stage for many other female Olympic gold medalists, like Madge Sires, who became the first woman to win an Olympic gold medal for figure skating in 1908, as well as for many other female athletes who would dominate the Olympics in years to come. Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite first for women in sports? It's a tough draw, but we'd rather play the best teams. For more incredible top tens published daily, be sure to subscribe to Ms. Mojo. China taking it to Mark Henry. Oh, man. Mark Henry was bragging about doing the wild thing with China, and he's paying for it now.